This is The Sand Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show, once again, are the SRP pedals by Moza Racing. Now, we very recently did an unboxing and assembly and first look or first thoughts of these pedals, as well as we just released the full, in-detail review of these pedals, but... We're going to try something a little different, something new today, that being the quick review. I just figured for some people, they don't have a lot of time. They don't need every last measurement about it. So we're going to try out doing the quick review, give you most of what you need, or at least the most important things. And then if you're really intrigued and you want to know more, you can check out that full length video. The SRP pedals are a 75 kilogram load cell based pedal set that are now the lower tier part of the lineup from Moza Racing and they start out at $179 for the two pedal set or you can get them in the three pedal set as you see here for $219 or you can just buy the independent clutch pedal combined it to the two pedal set for basically the same price but it's 40 bucks for the pedal on its own. The SRP pedals are made mostly of steel. In fact, the main tray and the main arm of the pedals are 1.75 millimeters thick, and the heel plate itself is a little thicker at 2.75 millimeters thick, and the heel plate is the backbone of the construction of the SRP pedals, with the pedals bolting to that heel plate with four small screws. If set at the widest point, the two pedals would be 10 and a quarter or 260 millimeters apart, and you can move them inward at increments of two and five eighths inch or 67 millimeters, or use that spacing for the brake pedal in the case of the three pedal set. Taking a closer look at the SRP pedal set, we can see that all three pedals actually share some very identical features, all three of them. So you're looking at that boxed steel for the lower tray and the pedal arm, and they all have the same resistance, that coiled spring that is sandwiched into the hinge point along with the magnetic sensor on the end of each pivot point, reading the movement of each pedal arm. Each pedal also has a rubber coated metal end stop as well as multiple mounting hole locations for the pedal faces. The gas pedal contains the controller board that allows each pedal to plug into it, one for the clutch, two for the brake, the magnetic and the load cell sensor, as well as one for the throttle and the USB to the computer. It also features an 8 inch tall aluminum pedal face. The clutch pedal is identical minus the controller board and it has more of a trapezoidal shaped aluminum pedal face that is three and a half inches or 89 millimeters ish. It is the same pedal face that is on the brake pedal. The brake pedal is then the same as the clutch with the addition of the load cell assembly of the SRP pedal set. This is a dual stage brake design that first compresses a lightweight yellow spring and then about 50% of the way in, it starts to compress a fairly dense rubber bushing. This is then the main resistance pressing on the 75 kilogram load cell. The SRP pedals do come with rubber grippers on the bottom or on the feet of the pedals and it makes you think that they would work for hardwood or carpet situations, but I'm going to tell you right now, with a 70 kilogram load cell, I'm going to save you some time. Don't even bother. It just doesn't work. I tried it. It doesn't work even if you put a backing on it. This is a heavy break in the grand scheme of things and you're going to want to secure these pedals. So the heel plate does have two holes pre-drilled. It comes with spacers underneath and the bolts, the M6 bolts that go through these holes into your rig or something, but they didn't supply the nut. So I guess your profile company would give you that for your aluminum type chassis or you'll have to come up with a nut on your own. I have my own. These holes are at 10 and 5 eighths or 264 millimeters apart. Now the rear holes are about 10 and 3 eighths or 264 millimeters back of the front ones, but they change. So if you change the spacing of the pedals, it changes where these holes line up. So in the two pedal configuration, it worked out. I just bolted them down. In the three pedal configuration, I had to get a little smarter. Either drill some holes or actually just put some bolts to hold down the back, which you're definitely going to want to do. Because if you mount only the front, front, it does lift up the back and you will get some flex out of the pedals. So you want to bolt down all the way around on these pedals. But a lot of stability comes from that hard mounting like that. And it actually beefs up the pedals and gives them more strength. On the software side of things, they are plug and play. So if you plug them into your computer, you can just map them in game and use them. But if you want to use the Moza Pit House software, you can actually set dead zone or set the range of the pedals if you want to add that extra control to the pedals. Now, when it comes down to driving, 
These really are giving you everything that you need on the most basic level. With them hard mounted, they are surprisingly stiff and, and really don't flex very much. The heel plate, even at 275 millimeters, was surprisingly stiff. The only noticeable flex in the entire system is where you would most expect it, and that was at the load cell under heavy braking. It was less flex than I expected and not felt by my foot at all. The movement on the pedals is very smooth, with the gas and clutch having identical pressure and feeling, which is medium spring tension. The throw on both of these pedals is what I would describe as long, which for me makes for much better control of my throttle application, especially in sketchier cars. The clutch and gas pedal are both met with nice rubber end stops, so no clacking or abrupt end point. Now what worked great as a gas pedal did not work quite as well as a clutch. Yes, it's the same tension, the same throw, and a slightly different pedal face, but the clutch has no secondary action or fall off point that you would expect from that pedal. It did signal the game properly and it allowed for using it, and I even did some quite successful heel and toe driving as well. So it accomplishes the goal, but just in a minimalistic way. The brake pedal is certainly the best feature of the SRP pedals. This dual stage brake pedal has a very, very distinct two stage feel about it. That lighter spring compresses easily. This is nice for heel toe driving. This is nice for very light scrubbing of the brakes at times. And it is clearly a first stage of movement. However, that second stage comes in very heavy. It took a bit of time to adjust to this, but in the end, it offered very predictable braking. And that heavy second stage delivered everything we expected, and the whole reason we went to load cells in the first place, which was that it was very easy and very consistent brake modulation. And for those who are coming from a stock Logitech, Thrustmaster, or even potentiometer-based fanatics, you will be blown away by the difference in using a load cell over a potentiometer and the feel and the consistency and the braking that you get, and you'll really appreciate the accuracy of a long throw throttle pedal like you get with these. So, to make things very clear, I want to go ahead and move on to my favorite three things and my least favorite things about the SRP pedals. It's kind of in the theme of our standard review, but a little bit smaller version of that. So starting with my favorite things, that being, especially in the two pedal configuration, at $179, this is the least expensive load cell brake set. I would call this the least expensive pro level driving set that you're gonna be able to get. Number two, all metal construction. Other than the wires, the sensors, the controller board, everything here is made of metal and should last for a very long time. And then number three, the load cell dual stage brake. Again, if you have not used a load cell in sim racing, it will blow your mind. It will change your driving. It will make you faster. It's proven at this point. I hate to say things like that. I don't want to tell people, oh, you got to spend money to be faster. But I think for enough years now, I've talked about the importance of the brake pedal and using at least a load cell to get better performance braking over a potentiometer. So I'm talking to you, if you're out there on a Logitech set of pedals, a Thrustmaster non-TLCM set of pedals, or even a set of Fanatics that are on old school pots, because most of them have gone to load cells in the case of Fanatic now. So with that, what are my biggest issues with the SRP pedals? Number one, I guess you get what you pay for. I mean, these are minimalistic pedals. I think in some angles, in some respects, you could even say they kind of look a little cheap, but they get the job done. Number two, they're actually at a very, very relaxed setback angle. In almost every pedal set that I've tested on a high performance level, they're at an angle that I can put them flat on my rig and everything works out. In the case of these, I actually had to use the incline. Luckily, I have an RC because I was able to just put them at an incline and then everything worked out fine. It just a little relaxed for a pro level pedals. It's almost like they went with the geometry for people who are going to use those grippers, but then they gave a set of pedals that are really made for being hard mounted onto a rig. And then number three, no action on the clutch. I mean, these are trying in so many ways to be a pro level pedal set. I keep saying that even though they're minimalistic. Well, with no fall off on the clutch, I can't think of a pro level set that doesn't have some kind of a cam action, some kind of a bearing fall off point, some kind of a spring set that lets the pedal release and feel like a clutch pedal. 
This really doesn't feel much like a clutch pedal without some kind of a secondary resistance or fall off point. After testing these pedals and after doing the full review as well, I can tell you this. This is a great set of pedals as an upgrade option for those who just can't afford $500, $800, $1,000, $2,000 pedal sets. For those who are looking to get off of a potentiometer and just don't have the big bucks, these are going to get the job done again, especially in that two pedal configuration. I think that's the best deal for these is in the two pedal configuration. I think they are also a great option for those who have actually broken their pedals out there unexpectedly. You lose your pedals, you need something now, and you just don't have the budget. You need something immediately that you can afford because it's an emergency situation, and I think these will fit the bill there and not leave you too disappointed compared to whatever broke and left you really disappointed. And then finally, I think these are a great option for somebody who's getting into sim racing and they know they're getting into the deep end right out of the gate. They've never done it before, but they're getting all in from the beginning. Buying a computer, buying monitors, buying a rig, buying a wheel, buying pedals, and that gets very expensive when you're looking at a full kit and you still want to be at a pro level. Again, these get you in that load cell break and it might get that entire rig in on the kind of budget that you're looking for. And then at the same time, you can upgrade these later, but not have to do it too quickly. So I think it works great for those starting out at a certain level of rig out of the gate. So now who are these not for? I think a lot of people are going to immediately say, oh, I have some TLCMs. Do I need to get these pedals? No, I really don't think you need to. It would be a sideways upgrade. Oh, I'm sitting on the CSL pedal load cell kit from Fnatic. Do I need these pedals? The answer is no, you really don't. It would be more of a sideways upgrade. These are the bang for the buck entry level load cell pedal set. And for those who keep that in mind, I think they'll be very happy with the purchase. For those who expect more, they'll probably be a little disappointed. So I want to thank Moza for sending the SRP pedals over here for a review. You can check them out for yourself at MozaRacing.com. And I hope you've enjoyed this quick format review. I hope I've told you everything you need to know in a short amount of time. But if you want more, we do have a link in the description to the unboxing, the assembly, and our first thoughts of the pedals as well as the link to the full 30 minute near 30 minute review of the pedals as well in the link down below so you can see that if you want to know more so i hope you've enjoyed this show thank you very much for watching be sure to subscribe so you can find out when our next video comes out and be sure to thumbs up if you like what we've done this is the sim pit i'm sean cole and i'll see you on the track